Hello folks, welcome back. Thank you for taking the time to join me once more. This is Nicholas. I'm a pharmacy practitioner. This channel is dedicated to healthcare education and pharmacy stuff. So feel free to hit that subscribe button if there is something you find interesting or useful. Today we'll be reviewing the medication called Meloxcam. As usual, we'll look at the brief description of the medication. We'll look at its uh, uh, approved uses, some common doses, as well as some best practices and precautions. So we look at some side effects as well. As in all my videos, please use this, please use this one for information on educational purposes only. It should not substitute advice from your doctor regarding your health and medications. So Meloxcam, which is sold under the brand name Mobic in the USA, and is also found in other brands uh, in most of the countries, it belongs to a class of medication called NSAIDs, which are non stredo and inflammatory drugs. They are primarily used to take care of pain, inflammation, and swelling. So common medications in this class are ibuprofen, naproxen, diclofenac, aspirin, indomethacin, etc. Approved uses uh, of uh, meloxicam include, meaning it's used to treat or manage the following conditions, osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, juvenile arthritis, a juvenile arthritis is basically inflammation in the joints of children and also it's used to manage moderate to severe pain either as a single therapy, as a monotherapy or in combination with other medications that are non-NSAIDs. So you don't want to be using two NSAID concurrently. We'll be talking about that later when we begin talking about precautions. Regarding the dose of meloxicam, a typical dose is 7.5 mg once a day. Okay? So it starts with the 7.5 mg and may increase to 15 mg daily if needed. So the maximum dose recommended is 15 mg. I must say that I have seen some doctors prescribe more than that. I have seen 30 mg a day. But just bear in mind that the maximum recommended dose is 15 mg. So if you are one of those who have been prescribed, prescribing 15 mg, it depends on your own individual circumstances and the best way about it is to discuss it with your individual doctor. Okay, so meloxicam has some side effects. Side effects primarily uh, center around uh, gastrointestinal issues. So there have been reported of gastrointestinal bleeding, ulceration and also perforation. Okay, so the longer you use this medication, uh, the greater the risk of such the GI side effects and I might say that it's not unique to meloxicam it is a side effects of all NSAIDs so you see from the statistics here that about 1% of patients taking meloxicam for 3 to 6 months had some form of gastrointestinal issues and if you increase that duration for about a year that percentage doubles or even quadruples to the number of people that experience such gastrointestinal bleeding or ulceration other side effects include abdominal pain, so there are reports of diarrhea, uh, flatulence, nausea, uh, and also vomiting, anemia, fluid retention, edema. There are also reports of allergic uh, re reactions or respiratory reactions. Okay, so NSAIDs in general or meloxicam can trigger some asthmatic symptoms like uh, bronchospasm, dyspnea, okay, uh, also fever. Uh, itching okay dizziness also has been reported to be honest with you if you look at the side effects of NSAIDs it's such a long list and it may scare you but practically a lot of people take NSAIDs or meloxicam for that matter and they do quite well on it so as long as you take it into consideration some of the precautions that I'm about to share okay so now that now the first uh, the first precaution that we want to tackle obviously deal with the gastrointestinal side effects and one of the easiest ways to handle that is uh, first to take meloxicam on a full stomach do not take meloxicam on an empty stomach while having food in stomach may not necessarily eliminate this risk it reduces it profoundly so don't forget to take meloxicam i mean with something small in the stomach so just don't take it on an empty stomach also is a very good idea to avoid taking meloxicam concurrently with other NSAIDs. So the expectation is that you will not be taking meloxicam together with diclofenac or naproxen. 
if there is any reason why you need anything extra okay generally it is recommended that you take something that is non-acid something like paracetamol or Tylenol okay as long as it is uh, approved by a doctor or you don't have any other reason why you should not take something like that for this reason for anyone who has a history of stomach ulcers or stomach bleeding generally we recommend that you you will have to be very cautious if you have to take meloxicam or if you take any acid for that matter so definitely le let your healthcare provider know that you have a history of ulcers whenever you want to be given meloxicam okay also if there is a history of hypertension you want to be extra cautious before taking meloxicam this is because generally a long-term use of meloxicam or NSAID may worsen hypertension therefore making the affected individual prone to cardiovascular issue so if you have high blood pressure and you are taking meloxicam you need to be to monitor to ensure that everything is on track i mean the blood pressure is not uh, doing something crazy also if anybody has any bleeding disorders they need to be careful when they take meloxicam this is also true for people who don't necessarily have bleeding disorders but take blood thinners like warfarin heparin and antiplatelet, antiplatelet medications uh, and also antidepressant medication like uh, sertraline duloxetine which are which are which have antiplatelet activity so when combined with the meloxicam increase the risk of bleeding so concurrent use of meloxicam with the, such medication should be taken into precaution okay don't mistake me i'm not saying that uh, those those two should not be taken together but just application so that you know what to expect people with kidney disease should also be, be cautious when taking meloxicam meloxicam and other NSAID are known to worsen kidney function and therefore if you have issues with your kidney you will have to reconsider so while generally meloxicam is relatively safe to use one certain class of people the risk uh, of adverse effect is relatively high okay such people should be cautious i'm talking about elderly people people who smoke and people that uh, use uh, excessive alcohol such a class of people are at high risk of developing side effects of meloxicam if you fail to if you fall into that category you may need to uh, make some amends so some general best practices okay so let's look at some general best practices okay make sure to take meloxicam the same time every day meloxicam may cause delays in ovulation for women and also may decrease sperm count in men so if you plan on having children definitely have a discussion with your doctor before starting on meloxicam also let your doctor know if you are developing some uh, kind of rash or kind of blistering or peeling of the skin because this may be a sign of a serious allergic reaction that needs to be taken care of okay Thank you so much for staying with me through throughout this review. As usual, I appreciate you for your support. Okay, so if you haven't already subscribed, please do so, and I will see you on the next one. Bye bye. Hey.